Hello class, welcome to pre-algebra lesson 5-1, which is all about roots. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to find square roots. So first, before we talk about square roots, let's talk about perfect squares. So perfect square would be written like this. So if I'm looking at one, it would mean one squared, which means one times one, which equals one. Two squared would look like this, and it would mean two times two, which is four. So you'd write four. Three squared means three times three, which would be nine. So that little two, that squared, tells you how many times you're multiplying the base or the big number by itself. So here this tells me I'm multiplying two threes. Four squared means I'm multiplying two fours. So four times four. That tells me 16. Okay. And if you keep going, 5 squared would mean 5 times 5, which is 25. So this list of perfect squares is something that's really good to know and try to memorize, okay? Because it's going to make math um, from now until whenever you're done using math, which you, you will never be done using math. Um, but it will make life easier to know these facts. So let me show you... Um, until you memorize that, you can use the calculator. So here, if I do six, if I wanted to know what six squared is, on the calculator, I'd hit six, and then I would hit this key right here. That key looks like this. I know the picture is not very big and it's kind of grainy. Um, so you would hit six and then that X squared button, and it would give you the number 36 on the screen. If we were to hit seven squared, it would say 49. If we hit 8 squared, it would say 64. 81 for 9 squared. 10 squared is 100. 11 squared is 121. 12 squared is 144. Okay, so that's how you check what a perfect square is on a calculator. That's how you can use your calculator. So that means if I ever asked you, like, what is 35 squared, you could type in 35 to your calculator and then hit the squared key and it would tell you that that's 1,225, okay? So wanna make sure that you feel comfortable using the calculator as well. Now, before I move to the next slide, I'm gonna talk about something that's gonna seem a little bit off topic, but I promise it all connects. So if I were to ask you, what is the opposite of addition? So what is the opposite? you would hopefully say subtraction. And if I ask what's the opposite of multiplication, hopefully you would say division. So then I wanna let you guys know that squares are the opposite, perfect squares are the opposite of square roots, okay? So squares and square roots are opposites of each other. So now what that means is if you take that table from the last slide, this is the exact opposite. Look, this is what I wrote in on the last one. And then the square root would be the numbers that were in the last table before I started filling things in. So I would say the square root of one, what number times itself gives me one? It's just one. The square root of two, or sorry, not two, the square root of four, what number times itself gives me four? That would be two. The square root of nine is three times three. Six, the square root of 16 is four, square root of 25 is five. And maybe as we get going again, these bigger numbers, maybe you don't know and you need to use a calculator. So let me show you what you would do. Now you're gonna hit the second key. Okay, so that's your first step. Then you're gonna hit the X squared, and then you type whatever number in. Okay, so first you hit the second key, then you hit the X squared, and then you type in your number. So if you hit second X squared, a square root pops, pops up on your calculator, and then you type in the number, and it's gonna tell you what the square root is. So the square root of 36 is six, the square root of 49 is seven, the square root of 64 is eight, Square root of 81 is 9. 
square root of 100 is 10, square root of 121 is 11, and the square root of 144 is 12. Okay, so squares and square roots, opposites of each other. All right, so now let's practice finding positive square roots. So again, I would hit the second key, then I would hit the x squared key, and then I would type in 64. So I'd hit the 6 and then the 4. And it, when I hit enter, my calculator would tell me the number 8. Um, that's one of the lower square roots that I just know, so I wouldn't need to use a calculator there. But if the number is a number that you don't know what the square root is, use the calculator. It's, there's a tool to help you. Okay, so now I want you to try to find the square root of 225. Good luck. Hopefully when you typed this in, you found out that the square root of 225 is 15. If you have questions about that, please be sure to ask for some help. All right, now we're going to pause from talking about new things and we're going to do a quick review from the beginning of chapter three. We had talked about multiplication and division rules for positives and negatives. So let's quickly remember if you do a positive times positive, or a negative times negative, your answer is going to be a positive number. If you do a positive times negative, it's negative. Negative times positive, it's a negative. Okay, so um, the reason this is important is if we think about squares. So if I say 1 squared, that's 1 times 1, which is 1. If I say negative 1 squared, that's negative 1 times negative 1. So negative times negative is positive, and 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, so whenever you square a number, no matter what, you're going to have a positive number as your answer. Then, remember, a square root is when you work backwards, right? So that means that you're taking a positive number and trying to get back to here. Okay, so that means that you can never take the square root, or you can only, let me say it this way, you can only take the square root of a positive number. If you try to take the square root of a negative number, it's not going to work because a positive times a positive is positive, and a negative times a negative is positive. And squares are where you multiply the same thing twice, okay? So... If you try to do the square root of a negative number on your calculator, your calculator is going to say domain error. Okay? And that means that you just you can't do that. There is no answer for that type of problem. So we're going to look at like how to use negatives with squares. So um, since there were two different ways to get the same answer, right? We use a special symbol when trying to solve. This is called a plus or minus. And when you're solving, all that means is you're going to, for now at least, you're going to put that plus minus, right, you're going to copy that down into your answer, and then you're going to type on your calculator the square root of 121. And the square root of 121, that's 11. So my answer would be positive or negative 11. And that's what my final answer would be. If I forgot to write that symbol, I'm only going to get half credit because I only included the positive version of the answer. So I need to make sure to write down the positive negative or plus minus 11. Or you can say 11 or negative 11. Okay, both of those answers work. Um, usually students prefer to do the shorter way and write out the plus minus symbol with the 11. Okay, now I want you to practice this one on your own. What is, or simplify, plus or minus square root of 144. Good luck. All right, so on your answer on your paper, you should have written down plus minus and then 12. If you have questions about that, please be sure to ask for some help. Well, let's move on to the next example. 
we have now the negative square root of 25 over 36. So whenever you have a sign out front, you just carry that down to be part of your answer. And then when we have the square root of a fraction, you can kind of split it up into two parts. You can say the square root of 25 over the square root of 36. And then I want to simplify a bit. So I carry that symbol, that negative. What's the square root of 25? It's 5. So I'm going to write 5 over the square root of 36 is 6. So my answer would be negative 5 over 6 because I can't reduce that fraction anymore. So that is going to be the final answer. In this case, I don't have the plus on top because I don't have the plus on top in the starting problem. So I just have that negative. All right, why don't you go ahead and solve this one on your own? Good luck. Hopefully with this problem, you ended up at a negative 7 eighths. Um, the square root of 49 is 7, square root of 8 is, or square root of 64 is 8. So that's how I got 7 over 8. And then there was that negative sign in front, so I carried that along with my answer. Okay, so now let's look at this one. I have the square root of negative 25. So if you remember back a couple of slides, I talked about how if there's a negative under here, you're going to get a domain error. So this is called no solution, or I'm okay with you saying... You can use this symbol, that means no solution. So it looks like zero with a slash through it, okay? So you can either write out the words no solution or you can use that little symbol, the, circle, the zero with a line through it, okay? Now, let's look at this written in a slightly different way. If I asked you what is nine squared, you would write 81. If I ask you what's the square root of 81, you would say nine. So let's say that this looks a little different. Let's pretend that instead of having a 9 here, I said x squared equals 81. How would I know to find what that number is? I would undo that square. So I would say x equals um, the square root. Sorry, that was... Bad writing. Let me try that again. X equals the square root of 81. And that's how I would get X equals 9. Then over here, this one is, um, this one might look like this. The square root of what number equals 9? The way that you would undo that is you'd say X equals 9 squared or X equals 81. Okay, so I recommend especially if you haven't been taking notes, because I know some of you really fight me on this, even though you need to be taking notes. Um, if you're not going to write down anything from this video, write down this slide. Write down these two examples so you can look back at them to use them to solve, okay? Um, so if you're not going to write down anything else from this video, at least write down this slide. All right. So now let's practice solving this problem. So I have m squared equals 169. So I'm going to do what I talked about. What's the opposite of a square? It's taking the square root. So m equals the square root of 169, which is 13. So that would be my answer, m equals 13. And sometimes when you're doing these problems, it expects you to do plus or minus any time that you um, have an equation and you redo it, it's going to expect you to do the plus minus in front of it. So you'd say m equals plus minus 13, positive or negative 13, okay? I want you to try solving this one on your own. Good luck. Okay, for this problem, hopefully you ended up at a positive or negative 16 as a final answer. If not, be sure to reach out for some help. I'm happy to help you. I hope you guys have a great day.